Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships with Wadrace. And for today's video, I am going to be doing a few things. First and foremost, I am going to be going over the patch notes for the British Cruisers patch or update 9 for World of Warships. So uh, let's go ahead and get going. First off, the British Heavy Cruisers are going to be in early access. This is the Tier 5, 6, 7, and 8, Hawkins, Devonshire, Surrey, and Albemarle. I think they prefer or pronounced that last one right. Um, and these are going to be accessible basically by the same mechanics and everything as uh, previously, except the one thing I am noticing is there aren't any uh, premium rewards boxes or anything like that. So this looks like it's going to be purely on the uh, tokens earned for dailies, directives, and so on and so forth. So um, we're still using the as such highly overused uh, directive meta for trying to get all of this together. And well, needless to say, we kind of understand how that's going to work overall. There is also a little bit more of a detailed discussion of all of this, but overall really nothing uh, to go over too, too much. The big thing is that you can get a total of 600 tokens overall from uh, daily missions and all four directives, and they really don't elaborate a whole hell of a lot on how much on what uh, overall you can get some of these for, but we'll see. Looks like it's mostly focused on the random bundles here. Um, and of course there are doubloons bundles as well that are going to be in there, but that that's a little bit uh, different. But British Heavy Cruisers are coming in this coming patch. That's all we really need to know there. Clan Battles, Sea of Fortune, they are, uh, this is the eighth season of Clan Battles, if I'm reading, understanding this properly. It's still Tier 10, 7 versus 7, kind of known quantities there for those of you who take part in those. Unique Upgrades for uh, Tier 10 ships are getting a little bit of a uh, repositioning, as, as it were. Um, combat missions can still be received as of 9.1 by playing one battle in the tier 10 ship for which it belongs to. Um, but they are going to be moved into the research bureau with no indication as to whether or not they're going to be locked behind bureau points or what. So going to be interesting to see where that actually changes. Simply being put, however being moved into the research bureau does indicate that they probably are going to be locked behind the bureau points and therefore the uh, whole regrind mechanic. So yeah, not 100% sure uh, how I feel about that. Um, but at the same time, there were only really a couple of the unique upgrades that were out there for the ships that I have in the first place that I actually wanted. So this Aside from trying maybe to finish up the ones that I have before they uh, disappear on the 31st of December 2020 this year, uh, that's really not going to affect me too much except for any new ships that I unlock. Um, special skin ships, which have already had a few changes, are now getting their uh, original skins as premium permanent camouflages, which will now give the uh, basic permanent camouflage bonuses, whereas right now they just give the basic camouflage bonuses. So that's a quality of life improvement there. And there are some permanent camouflages being added to a couple of the uh, premium uh, Pan-Asian ships that are going to be coming out in relatively short order. We do have some other minor changes. Um, these were actually discussed in the community stream earlier this week. 
Hindenburg is getting a reload buff. It's a point seven second increase or cut to her reload time for her main battery. So, granted, I've never felt that her guns were too slow, but apparently somebody else did, and so she's getting a little bit of a reload buff. Montana is getting an improvement to her repair party, which. Hey, a buff is a buff. I'll take it. Kremlin is getting a little bit of a nerf to her AA, primarily in the survivability of her AA mounts. So it seems that uh, those of you who play the Kremlin should expect your AA guns to be knocked out a little bit more regularly. Not that I've gotten to this ship myself yet, but it does seem like uh, this is something that some players would definitely complain about to some degree. Blaskovica is getting some uh, minor buffs, but only in, uh, I guess, quality of life. Not, certainly nothing that actually influenced direct stats. Um, primarily, her main guns and her torpedo tubes are getting improved uh, aiming angles. So, yeah, that is what it is. The... Tier 3 French destroyer Fusilier is getting some nerfs, and th I think I can actually call a couple of these rather heavy. Um, first off, her standard hull is going from 9300 EXP to 7900 EXP, which is a pretty substantial, what, 12, almost 13, 1400 hit point reduction for, for first hull. And I can kind of understand that she was definitely very high survivability for that tier. Kind of made her a little bit of a... too much of a powerhouse, maybe. So, yes, maybe she did need a little bit of a drawback in that regard. And her uh, upgraded hull has been dropped from 10,900 to the original HP of the standard hull. So... Okay, that that that's that seems reasonable. Now for a couple of things that I can't really comment on because I have not gotten to either of these ships. The Mogador is getting detectability ba or sorry, detectability nerfs on the uh, order of a half a kilometer by sea and what what is that? Almost a quarter of a kilometer by air. So you're going to be spotted a little bit earlier. And torpedo, range, torpedo detection range has been increased as well, probably because the uh, French destroyers have relatively quick torpedoes, so they do want to give players a little bit more of a chance to have some level of evasion against them. And this is actually going to be applying to both the Morgador and the Kleber. The Kleber is also receiving a detectability nerf as well. She's getting a full kilometer detectability nerf to her surface detection range, and her air detect is getting about a half kilometer but, or nerf. Also, detectability nerf for smoke. Mogador goes from 3.7 to 3, almost 4 kilometers, and then Kleber goes from 3.63 to... 4.15 kilometers. So, yeah, just going to have uh, issues with detectability there. Though, as far as the uh, detect detectability in smoke goes, I don't know why that even matters, considering these are destroyers that don't really carry the smoke generator. But maybe if you're used to teaming up with a player who helps you by smoking you out, that can be problematic as well. Um, another thing... The Henri is getting, I'm not sure if it's a nerf or a buff or what, but, uh, well, I can technically call, call it a little bit of a nerf, but overall quality of life improvement maybe when challenging her. It takes more time for her uh, engine to reach full power while she's accelerating, and the engine boost consumable have also uh, gotten some minor changes with her reaction to the ship. Um, basically, from my understanding, is she would kind of lurch forward every now and then, and whereas uh, now this will help with uh, smoothing out her acceleration, deceleration, so on and so forth. 
couple of maps have received the uh, new lighting model changes that you have, I'm sure, noticed on uh, several of the uh, maps by now. So nice to see some of the uh, optimization for the overall map appearance still being worked over. Um, and just other minor things that have been changed here and there. The armor profiles in port are also getting a little bit of a revamp. Just, oh, for, sorry, been a long day already. <laughs> the armor profiles just, uh, making it a little bit more clear on certain things as far as, uh, armor thickness, where it lies in the ship. And also only restricting the color coding to actual armor that is on the ship instead of having, like, say, half the scale that doesn't even appear on a ship in the first place. There's also going to be the addition of two new sections where you can actually remove just the torpedo armor protection or maybe the bow and stern armor sections instead of having to, having both of those calculated as one large block that may occasionally be hiding elements of the other. So, and that can understandably make things difficult when you're trying to view the armor profiles in port and just not really getting a good look at any of it because it just keeps removing blocks that don't make a whole lot of sense. Other additions and changes. Um, permanent camouflages for a couple of premium ships. And there are also some, and, oh yeah, the, uh, I, I should say the Swiss destroyer line, I, I mean, sorry, the Pan-Asian destroyer line is being added for testing by the general public. A few other changes, just minor things again, just, uh, and most of these don't even really seem overall incredible. Um, basically just appearance changes and that's really about it. Not not really much else to say there. <clears throat> now, that is the patch notes for update 9.0. There have been a couple of other things however that have come up in the World of Warships forums that do seem like they will have some bearing. So now we're coming over to the developer's corner in the forums. And, well, let's just see a couple of the things that are in here. We do have unique upgrades changes that are being put in here. This is basically just what we've already gone over in the patch notes. Um... Let's see, ship balance changes also. I think this was discussing yeah, the upgrade changes mentioned earlier. Um, here we go. Unique upgrades, clarifications, and changes. Okay. Moving upgrades to Research Bureau is a necessary step to evolve the system. Again, they haven't really mentioned whether or not they're going to be actually put up for Research Bureau points. So again, going to be interesting to see what all comes out as far as that. Um, I guess we'll get a good look at that until uh, when the, as we get closer to update 9.1 here. Um... They are looking at also finally getting unique upgrades to the uh, newer tier 10 ships for the tech lines. This includes like the French destroyers, the uh, Japanese gunboats, etc. and so forth that have not had any developed yet. So looking forward to see what comes out of there for that. Um, reviewing existing upgrades. That I think could be be an interesting can of worms because there are some of the uh, unique upgrades that are honestly rather nice to have on certain ships. I know I'm happy with the one that's on the Hindenburg. Um, I think there's one 
or two others that I'm happy with that I've actually gotten hold of. But uh, I do know that some flack has been given for uh, especially the unique upgrades that were put out for the CVs back when they were still on RTS that are now basically not even able to be slotted. So definitely nice to see them being reworked so that maybe they can be used again. I would definitely hope that Wargaming focuses maybe a little bit on oh, um, <clears throat> aircraft regeneration time, but that's another matter entirely. Um... Yeah. Again, move delivery method to the Bureau. Not entirely sure where that's going to go overall, so yeah. Eh. Okay. But anyway, the next thing, however, was upgrade changes. And I'm sure some of you have already seen Notzer's channel where he was talking about this. Um, these are changes to existing ship upgrades. These are the, the slot upgrades that you have, not your commander skills. And some of these are actually looking rather good. Now this is slated for update 9.1, so I'm sure as things develop we will see more and more information on where these actually end up. But right now where it looks like things are going does look uh, interesting. First off, we have new upgrades that are being implemented. Some of them are being, are actually replacing existing ones. For example, we have maneuverability system for slot two. This is replacing propulsion mod one and steering gears mod one. And basically all it's doing is combining their bonuses. So 20% reduction to both engine and steering gear incapacitation. So nice bonus there and it basically takes two previously I could almost say difficult choice modifications and putting them into one. And this is going to be a huge issue I would say especially for destroyers because Lord knows engine and steering gears for destroyers knocked out all the time. So helpful being able to have that help both of them instead of just going for, say, Propulsion Mod 1, which honestly is my go-to for destroyers because Propulsion is kind of like, oh, life in a destroyer. <clears throat> we also have this Torpedo Tubes Modification 1 for Slot 3 that is being proposed. And this is going to add a 20% to the rotation of torpedo tubes, a minus 40% chance to torpedo tube incapacitation, and a 5% bonus to torpedo speed. This is definitely something that is aimed at like more crew torpedo-oriented cruisers or definitely for destroyers. So definitely something that would be phenomenal. I could see this being a very high use in the, the German destroyers, maybe even the Japanese destroyers. Though the only, th the only other thing that I could see being added to this to maybe make it a little bit more appealing for destroyers would be maybe be a little bit of a torpedo reload boost as well. But, I mean, anything is better than nothing, really, as far as helping out destroyers and their torpedoes. And there are a couple of other things that directly fly in the face of this modification to uh, mention very shortly. Um, aircraft carriers are getting a viable uh, slot 3 modification for a 5% increase in aerial torpedo speed. Now, it may only be a couple of knots depending on the aircraft carrier you're looking at, but it's still torpedo speed. This is better chance of hitting a target at uh, minimum or even maximum range drop. So that that's actually a quality of life improvement for aircraft carriers for a change that I think has been needed for quite a while, actually. In fact, I think I can say rather comfortably that one of the uh, nerfs 
one of the earlier nerfs that I was aware of for aircraft carriers when I even first started playing the game was a nerf to the speed of aircraft torpedoes. So, and yeah, that that just caused all kinds of trouble as far as actually hitting targets with uh, airdropped torpedoes. So nice to see something that at least gets maybe a little bit of speed into those torpedoes that are slow as shit. Um, to not put too fine a point on it. <clears throat> Let's see. Torpedo protection system. This is in direct response, I believe, to the Torpedo Tubes Mod 1 for destroyers. So this is a counter uh, modification for larger ships. It replaces Target Acquisition System Mod 1, which... There are some things that I think could be taken from Target Acquisition System and folded into this Torpedo Protection System as kind of a default additional help. For example, one of the things about Target Acquisition System that I do think is viable is the extra assured detection range, which can help. It, it can increase the detection of, say, a destroyer that's hiding around an island from three kilometers to two kilometers. It gives you an extra kilometer of bonus to realize you need to kick your rudder over or as they're trying to ambush you or whatever. So it would actually be nice to see that 50% increase to a short detection range folded into this. But whether or not it does, we'll, we'll see. It'll depend on how the testing goes. There, But some of the other target acquisition system things that uh, are being adjusted, I suppose, I, I can definitely accept losing them in favor of some of these. For example, the torpedoes will get a fixed detection range of 1.8 kilometers where this uh, modification is applied, which for battleships or maybe low maneuverability cruisers, this is a big deal. It's just simply more time to maneuver, etc. and so forth. And there's also a 5% 5 5 reduction to torpedo damage, or more accurately, a 5% increase to ship's torpedo protection. So, nice bonus there, again, for some of your more sluggish ships, which may not be able to dodge torpedoes as effectively. So they've got more distance at which the torpedoes will be spotted, and slightly better protection against the torpedoes in the first place. So a nice bonus. And again, I think this is also in response to the Torpedo Tubes Mod 1, even more so in response to the fact that the torpedoes are going to be moving a reasonable bit faster in some cases. Um, I know some of the Japanese torpedoes, and maybe even the uh, new pan-European Swiss destroyers, are going to be seeing some 80 plus knot torpedoes here, especially once you start taking into effect uh, commander skills as well. So definitely needs something to offset that a little bit, and I think this is going to help in that regard. Um, for slot 5, not entirely sure how I feel about this one. Maybe a quality of life improvement, depending on how it how it's used or what it's used to replace. Um a 10% increase to the action time of ship consumables. I can see this being usable for a number of ships if you don't have a whole lot of other viable options where maybe your armament doesn't, or uh, maneuverability doesn't really allow you to get much out of any of the other modifications. So this would give a nice little bonus to, say, smoke generation for destroyers, but the other thing that I can see this benefiting as well is increasing the action time of repair party for battleships. So this is more potential health that a battleship could return in uh, in battle as well. And I can see that, I, I mentioned that as being mildly problematic also when you consider the incredibly powerful heal on the high-tiered British battleships. But that's another thing entirely. 
Um, there is also another aircraft carrier specific modification that is being put in, which is a 30% increase to the action time of squadron consumables, which also means that the ship consumables is not going to affect squadrons to my knowledge. In fact, it specifically says ship. So this is tailored specifically to aircraft carriers and aircraft carrier squadrons. And it just simply means that the fighters may stick around 30% longer. The heal for the uh, torpedo bombers is going to last a little bit longer. And also the engine boost uh, will last a little bit longer. So some nice improvements there as well. Then, of course, there's the one that I'm looking at as being a major change and definitely has some uh, viable play here as well. This is going for slot six, so it does, unfortunately, remove one thing for, for lower tier ships. And I'm going to mention this one first. The, I think it's AA Guns Mod 2, which is, I think right now, slot three modification. This basically takes that away. It, that AA Guns Mod 2 is going away entirely, to my understanding. In fact, they even say it right here. They will be removed from the game. It This mod adds two explosions to the AA Defense salvos, which is the, the flak bursts. The downside is, again, this gets rid of AA Guns Mod 2, which for lower tier ships can have some ramifications because there were some lower tier ships, to my understanding, that would use this to almost triple the firepower of their AA salvos. So now that is basically going away at some of the lower tiers. Um, the nice thing is it's being retained at the higher tiers, which I suppose the AA is a little bit more relevant but I can definitely see, and I, I'm sure looking through the comments, there are all kinds of players that are already going off all to hell over that. Um, and it does also fold in the 15% continuous damage bonus to AA mounts. So a nice little bonus there as well. Um... It also folds in, however, the secondary shell or secondary artillery bonuses. Um, primarily reduction of uh, secondary battery reload time of 20%, um, which. Wait a second. Let me let me make sure I actually have this right. Let me go in game here real quick and make sure I'm not actually misreading something here. Okay, I am misreading it. The secondary battery mod two is just a twenty per second or twenty percent reduction to secondary battery reload time. I'm glad I checked on that because I could have sworn that was actually a secondary battery also had a secondary battery dispersion or secondary battery range application to it, which is why I wanted to check on it. But no, it's actually, we're, we're good in that regard. So yeah, taking secondary battery modification two and throwing that, just combining it with AA guns mod one and what was it? AA guns mod two. Ooh, wait a second. If I'm reading that right, again. Okay, that... Ooh. So that's actually even more bonus when you think about it for, uh... Ooh, that's... Uh, oh, ho, ho, ho! <coughs> players are focusing on that a lot more than I think they're supposed to. They're, re they're reading that as removal of AA Mod 1. They're literally seeing that as straight-up removal of AA Mod 1. Okay, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Back, backtracking, backtracking.
Okay. My, my brain is making connections that don't exist. Sorry, folks. Um, okay. So, anyway... This basically folds AA Guns Mod 2 and Secondary Battery Mod 2 into one thing and basically adds the effect of the existing AA Mod 1 as well into this as well. So you get the effect of AA Guns Mod 1 plus AA Guns Mod 2 and the Secondary Battery Modification. So this is a major bonus, especially for your higher tier ships where for one modification, they're basically getting three overall. So they're getting two additional explosions per AA battery salvo, plus increased damage of their AA mounts for both the continuous and the explosion, the, the flak salvos, and they're getting a 20% reduction to secondary battery reload. That is going to be a very powerful modification for quite a number of ships, especially those who are, say, weaker in their AA suites <coughs> and also have very strong secondary battery modifications. The, uh, in fact, if I'm interpreting this correctly, this is going to be basically a go-to modification now for um, especially like the German battleships or any, uh, any of these ships that well, already would have the secondary battery mod on them anyway, the secondary spe specific ships. But now this makes it even more relevant because now their AA is going to be that much more powerful as well. So that's a huge quality of life improvement for quite a number of ships that were secondary oriented and had okay AA suites. Now they get their secondary bonus plus better AA. That, that's a huge improvement, I think. So I can definitely see a lot of players who focus on their secondary bonuses switching and taking all of this and just getting really good AA as well as their secondary batteries. So that, that's going to be a huge change. But coming back to the number of explosions per salvo, this was something that used to be Defensive AA Mod 1. Defensive AA Mod 1 is getting a major overhaul, it's taking away those two explosions and basically making it a 10% reduction to the reload time of DFAA. <clears throat> Sorry, wrong one. <laughs> wow, I'm just all over the place today, aren't I? AA Guns Mod 1, not DFAA Mod 1. Um, It's, okay, still removing the number of explosions per salvo, but the prep time of priority sector is being reduced by 20%. Which, yeah, from an AA standpoint, especially for the lower tier ships, where this would make a huge change in their AA overall for uh, slot 3 by giving them those extra flak bursts where necessary, this does make a big difference because, honestly... And I, I can kind of understand where some people are coming from on this. I would rather have the flak bursts than a faster reset in my priority sector. Because the priority sector, in all honesty, while it is a nice feature, it still... You, you can't supplement a short-term bonus of continuous damage for a single large burst flak damage. So, yeah, I, I can definitely see low tiers actually suffering quite a bit for this one. Um, now, this is an AA bonus still for ships at higher tiers where they can also apply these, th this modification, but as far as lower tiers, th th that's actually going to hurt quite a bit. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, other changes that are going in, Damage Control System Mod 1, which is already currently a 5% re reduction to fire chance and a 3% re reduction to flood chance, 
is now also getting a 2% bonus to ship torpedo protection. So if you have the... What is it? Which one is it? The torpedo protection system, that, or currently known as the target acquisition system, which is something that I actually have on most of my battleships, believe it or not. I, I, I And again, some people will argue, why are you taking target acquisition over concealment? I honestly feel in a battleship that concealment is bullshit. But anyway, that's beside the point. I would honestly rather go for the t the torpedo bonuses that are coming with the new change for uh, the, this torpedo protection system than over the target acquisition system. But that that's an argument for a whole bunch of other people. Um, so overall, though, between the torpedo protection system and the damage control system modification, that is an overall plus 7% increase to the torpedo damage protection of your ships. This takes my Iowa from 25% to 32% damage reduction from torpedoes. That is a phenomenal change, especially when you consider that for torpedoes, like Japanese torpedoes, that can be as much as a thousand points worth of damage. So if you're sitting right on the cusp of that transition point where a torpedo can be kill or live, that can make a huge difference. So, hoorah. I can be very, very happy with that change. Let's see, main battery mod 2 from slot 3 here. That's this one right here is getting a minor change where it just basically becomes a straight up buff. The 5% reduction to, or the 5% increase in reload time is going away. So this is becoming a straight main battery traverse module, which for sl especially slow rotation ships, like uh, say, I mean, on the Iowa, it's not too much of a change. I mean, 38.3 seconds with a commander with expert marksman, I can live with that. But when you're looking at, say, your tier 10 battleship Yamato with its almost full minute turret rotation, <laughs> which, yeah, I, I mean, I've got, uh, well, I don't have, well, I don't have that on there. Oh yeah, that's right, I've got a secondary build. But it would take that main battery and basically turn its rotation or into something that is very, very usable. Probably somewhere in the range of 40 seconds versus 48 seconds with a uh, expert marksman commander. And... It really just makes some of those slower rotations just much more usable. In fact, I know there are a couple of ships at tier 5 or 6, the uh, especially the tier 5 or 6 battleships, which have like a 60 second turret rotation, where that's just going to make a huge change in how they interact with the other ships around them. <laughs> especially when you consider that some of these, like the artillery pl plotting room, You've got your main battery range, which in some cases I would honestly very much rather sacrifice that for turret rotation because that's actually the ability to get guns on target versus actually being able to reach a target that may be charging you down or whatever anyway. So be that as it is. I mean, that's honestly one of the only reasons why I went with the artillery plotting room in the first place on my uh, lower tiers, like the New York or the uh, Piotr Vailiki. And I can't even apply tar the uh, artillery plotting room on that one, on some of these. In fact, I can pretty much only mount the uh, aiming systems on uh, some of these. So, but the only reason that I don't apply the uh, main battery mod 2 in some cases is one, Dispersion is a big deal, so I'd rather cut my dispersion also as well. But there's also the simple fact that main battery mod 2, 
that that fifteen percent turret rotation, I would rather not have the turret rotation in at the simple fact that I would not be harming my main battery reload in some cases. So having that opportunity to be able to have the greater turret rotation without sacrificing my main battery firing would be a ver is and will be a very big deal. In fact, another ship that I know will benefit from this greatly is the uh, War Spite and even the Queen Elizabeth, where main battery mod 2, I mean, you can already see I've got main battery mod 2 on here because these turrets turn so friggin' slow, it's not even funny. And, I mean, that hurts her reload. It takes it from 30, 30 seconds to 31 and a half seconds. So now having that extra bonus... Basically, her reload's going back to the base 30 seconds for both the Warspite and the Queen Elizabeth, and her turrets are just going to kick over that much faster. So, major, major quality of life improvement here. As far as battleships are concerned. Um, I've already mentioned AA Guns Mod 1. And finally, special upgrades. These are the consumables that you... or the consumable upgrades that you purchase in the armory for coal. Um, this is the surveillance radar mod, hydro, defensive, damage control, etc. and so forth. These are getting basically the ability to be installed on all ships. So restrictions by class and tier are being removed. This means that the smoke or uh, the th smoke generator mod will be applicable for cruisers. Like, oh, the Italian cruisers with the uh, with their nice smoke, smoke generator modification. The engine boost modification could be applied to, oh, uh, lower tier destroyers now. The spotting aircraft mod, oh, well, we're not talking so much about that one. That, who uses the spotting aircraft quite that much? The elimination of ARP and Dragon ships is being taken away from the uh, Damage Control Party modification bonus here. Um, DFAA. Again, it can now be applied to lower tier ships. This is a slot 2 modification. So this could be literally applied to all tier 2 and up ships that can apply DFAA. Uh, damage Control mod. Again, this is a... Slot 1 upgrade for damage control parties. So this is something that would benefit l even just lower tier battleships. Very low tier battleships. Tier 4 and on. Or even lower tier cruisers. Like, say, the uh, British Lights. Hydro. Again, slot 2. This would be a big one for lower tier German destroyers, even. And, of course, surveillance radar. This is a big one and makes changes in that regard. It also opens up the possibility, I suppose, of them adding some of these consumables at the lower tiers so that newer players can become accustomed to these modules, these consumables even, at an earlier stage. Though, let's not really go there quite yet. <laughs> but overall, these are some interesting changes that I see coming. Um, the Big one that I see people going off about, again, is this one right here. The removal of the two salvos, or the two explosion salvos from the AA, lower AA slot. In fact, I can understand entirely that this is probably going to take what would be a uh, AA ship decision from slot 3 and shift it very much into becoming just... Well, this is going away, so maybe I'll focus for my secondaries, or for my dispersion, or for my main battery traverse. So, yeah, there is that. Because honestly, in, in some regards, the, the AA, again, the priority sector prep time, while in some cases it may seem a little slow, honestly, what all it really does is boost your continuous damage just a little bit for a few seconds. It really does not do 
anything incredible for you overall, though, that I've noticed in some cases. And uh, yeah, I mean, tw 20 seconds overall. So you get a shorter period of time for the reset, but that's really about it. Honestly, again, if I were at lower tiers, I would definitely rather retain that flak burst. So, maybe that will change as things go. We'll see overall with testing, but it'll be interesting to see how things develop in the long run. Anyway, that goes over just about everything that I really wanted to talk about. Um, actually, no, there was one other thing. Yeah, the new ship. So, yeah, this one's a big one. Especially the thing that's right up front here. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. <coughs> Battleship ya Yashima. Tier 10, basically Yamato. Um, except she's being given 20 inch guns. 510 millimeter guns. Now, this is something, uh, yet another thing that Wargaming said they were never going to do that has been just utterly blown out of the water this year. Um, first subs, then uh, ships sold for, um, or tier 10 ships sold. I'm kind of talking somewhat about the uh, Puerto Rico there. Because, well, some may argue that, sh well, she wasn't being directly sold for cash through the premium shop. I'm sorry. There was still the chance to completely get her entirely with doubloons without having to even go through the build process. Just cash her out straight. I'm, yeah, no, just, just no. She, for lack of a better term, you could basically count her as being sold for cash outright. So, yeah. But anyway, um, the other thing that they had apparently said they were never going to do was put a ship with larger guns than the Yamato in in the game. Well, guess what? They're testing one right now. It's the Yashima with 20-inch main battery, main battery guns. And basically all of her other stats, with exception of a few things like damage overall and a, I think a little bit of... Uh, a minor secondary battery rearranging has basically been uh, she, she's basically the same as the Yamato in all respects except for those big ass guns now I don't know if what ships if any actually have a 30 38 35 millimeter bow I'm sure there's something that exists somewhere at tier 10 Let's let, let's look through real quick and see if I can find one. Oh, just close all down. Let's see, 32. Uh, let's keep this primarily to battleships because I know that's where that's going to be. Let's see, GK. 60 millimeters, so you're certainly not penetrating that. Masashi's... Straight up 32, Iowa, Montana are both 32, FDG, 32, 60, Alsace has 32. So there's really no real reason that I can see, and I, I'm fairly sure there are other players who are blowing up about this as well. Um, there's, oh, geez. Well, no, that's still only 38, so with the 14.3 calculation, that's still not penetrating the armor belt here. But, see, here's the other thing. I'm not sure if it's a 14.3 calculation or if it's a 13.4 calculation. If it's 510 over 13.4, she will overmatch the armor belt of the Missouri and the Montana at this level. So, yeah. Whereas if it is the 14.3 uh, that I've been hearing, that really has no major change here. 
because she wouldn't get past a lot of this anyway. So I'm actually at the point where I'm starting to wonder exactly what people are blowing up about with this ship, unless the calculation itself, as far as the overpen, is actually different from what some people believe it is. Again, if it's that, if it's a 13.4 of the uh, caliber, then yeah, I can see it being relevant because that's straight up armor belt overmatch here for a couple of ships. In fact, I think even the uh, Montana, if I'm, if I remember correctly, yeah, she her upper armor belt is also 38 millimeters, so that's straight up overmatch of a lot of uh, higher tier ships on the um, upper armor belt, especially. Um, so yeah, that, that could actually hurt if that's a 13.4 of caliber. Um, but if it's the 14.3 of caliber, then the, these 38 millimeter strips here that we're seeing, that there's still going to be the overmatch overmatch potential there, or not as much overmatch potential there, but the other thing you have to consider in that regard also is the simple fact that we're, we're also considering effective armor. So, well, no, that's still not changing too much, is it? So, yeah. So, yeah, uh, again, I'm suddenly not sure what exactly people are blowing up about over this ship. Uh, in fact, I'm even starting to wonder what the point of even coming out with this ship in the first place even is at this rate. Especially considering she's going to have low rate of fire on super big guns. It... it yeah, that this ship suddenly does not make a whole lot of sense. Except to basically give people a premium... Yamato with big guns. Or bigger guns. Moving on. A um, couple of other things. We do have a, a European destroyer that is being added. This is basically a going to be a Polish tier 8. Um, but still basically British. <laughs> um, and looks like she's got some nice stats to her. There's a Japanese tier 8 that's also being added in, basically a, uh, what I've been hearing, a Kagero modification, and her little unique gimmick is she's being given 150mm guns with a better reload than the base on just about every Japanese destroyer in the game as it is. <coughs> Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, and her torpedo armament really isn't too stellar by what I'm seeing either, aside from the fact that they are still the very powerful Japanese torpedoes overall. And one that I'm really curious about here, um, and in fact I'm sure a bunch of people are curious about, is the Agir, I think it is, or Agir... I'm not, not entirely sure how to pronounce that one, honestly. Um, and some of the terminology has me a little bit interested as well. For example, same hull as Siegfried. So, yeah. Really makes me wonder what happened or what is going on with the Siegfried. Are they getting ready to finally release the Siegfried? Or is this basically a uh, Siegfried re revamp to a, a different tier overall because they didn't like the way the Siegfried was working out or something. Um, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see where all that goes. Um, but basically, German battlecruiser for tier 9 kind of response to the Alaska, Kronstadt, Zuma. So basically just keeping that theme moving a little bit. So definitely going to be interesting to see where uh, this goes as far as what ends up coming out overall. 
And of course, there's another destroyer that is coming out that is basically the same as the uh, Pan-Asian, or sorry, Pan-European Swiss Tier 10. But that seems to be a minor footnote by comparison to a couple of other things. Anyway, now I've talked about everything that I wanted to, so I suppose I shall go ahead, let you all go, digest all of the information that I've given you. Um, and I'm sure several of you will add in your comments as far as your own impressions, etc., on everything that we've talked about. So, going to be interesting to see where all that goes. Anyway, I hope to catch you all again later. Have a good one, folks. Happy hunting. And I'll see you all in game.